We know that when we dig deep into the very roots of our subjects, what we're actually doing is reaching out and drawing connections with a wide range of disciplines. So instead of being siloed and restricted by the curriculum, what we're doing is allowing students to be creative and broad and follow their own interests, looking across and between subjects. And isn't it in those gaps or in those overlaps that the truly exciting and interesting ideas dwell? We are using acids and alkalis and we're creating different art with the cabbage juice. And then if we're using an acid, it turns up one colour and the alkali does a different colour. So it allows us to view problems or view different things through lenses in which we, we might be expert but also through lenses in which we might actually not be expert in and it, it forms that kind of large-scale academic kaleidoscope where we're not necessarily searching for the answer, we're searching for answers. It became evident from the beginning that STEAM was so much more than improving science or technology or creating engineering opportunities. It was about finding links in the curriculum. And so we find ourselves in this remarkable position now to have a STEAM tower and to take STEAM in the junior school to STEAM Plus. And who better to do that than Lizzie Jenkins, our new Assistant Head, Academic and Innovation. Thank you. So STEAM education for us is about more than just the subjects within its name. It's about unpacking problems and trying to resolve them whilst developing the ability to work together, learn from one another. They allow us to combine creativity with a deep and thorough knowledge of the STEAM subjects. Our skilled teachers look to creatively plan lessons which develop the STEAM values as we uphold the integrity of each subject area. Through this ethos and by developing positive attitudes and resilience towards problem solving, we are changing trends and preparing the generation of girls ready for the 21st century workplace to positively shape the world around them. Rainforest, and I think it sucks up pollution, so it's um, kinder and safer and smarter to the environment. We're seeing a rapid increase in robots that can like, now teach um, students how to read, and I think the future of social robots uh, is definitely ever expanding. I think the EPQ is a classic example of that, where students. Um, can find those connections, find their interests, where their subjects overlap, and then examine that in more detail. One of our students this year combined her interest in economics and in Germany um, to study the vulnerabilities of the automotive industry in Germany. Language is used to reflect the scientific surroundings around us, so in order to create stories there needs to be an understanding and observance of the world around you and that's what science is. Um, this is our circuit for our um, lanterns that we're making. Well I'm just cutting out my design for my lantern and it's like packaging so you like kind of come up and then they slot together like that. Um, and it's the, it's the idea of kind of playing and tinkering and exploring, trying things out, not for the pursuit of getting a grade at the end of it, but for the pursuit and the love of learning. Yes! Yay! You did it! I might be in an RE lesson, um, making, uh, using ancient dyes to make Joseph's Technicolor dream coat, or I might be in English, um, looking at the poetry of Edgar Allan Poe, through the lens of psychiatry, by promoting a uh, cross-curricular discourse and understanding, what we're trying to do is allow the students to develop a more well-rounded attitude to learning and a more integrated approach to real-world problems. Fabrics that don't um, that don't really um, interact well with water, such as polyester, is an example. So coming back, yeah. I'm just going to jump on that one. Mm -hmm. So for us, if we use polyester or hydrophobic fabric. It's the most enormous spreadsheet you've ever seen. Um, the data cells go down to, I think it was 27,000. And when the students opened it, it took ages for just to be able to see the whole data set. And uh, lots of them are then asking different research questions of that data set. 
um, we're just about in the pre being able to um, publish data on um, some serve speeds and the success of being able to win the points from that. That's given these students the most amazing opportunity to talk to scientists both locally here in near Wimbledon and um, the data scientists from IBM, but also a num number of sports scientists at University of Exeter and even in the, in the Netherlands. Yeah, I think the array of spaces is really useful, but what I also really value is that they are sort of separate, even though they're very conveniently close together. Something I really like about the space is the fact that there's so many different spaces to work and socialise. So you've got the common room area, which is a great place to hang out with your friends, have lunch, but you can also hold bigger meetings there after school, like we just we did. did. Just did yeah. uh, there's um, a more formal meeting room called the innovation room. There's a breakout room, which is great for small group study sessions or meetings. And then you've got a quiet study space. So you've got such a variety of places to work yeah. and socialise.